And the market has done a ton of work. It's up over 18 percent, but there's been a ton of dispersion in the market from best performing stock to worst performing stock. It's almost 150 percent. Look at the leadership board. We've got only four or five sectors outperforming 11. Um, so basically the point of the story is there's a lot of disp dispersion. Correlations are heading lower, which means you want to be a stock picker. If you're selling the market, you're selling the winners and you're selling the losers. The likes of healthcare, they have been left for dead and are up only 3%, which means underperforming the market by over 15%. That story is not over, particularly with biotech and pharma. Josh, how do you see it? I mean, we've had such a move, and then, you know, here we go in May, and, you know, maybe we're sort of taking stock of, of where we, we are and where you think we can go. Yeah, well, I, look, I think you've had um, an incredible run in a lot of stocks. You, you, you look at the NASDAQ up 22% up uh, this year. You look at the Dow, uh, which is having its best uh, start to the year, best four months since 1999. You look at the S&P, which is up the best four months to start the year since 1987. Um, and, and the journal collected all these data points very nicely yesterday. And I think you just say, all right, well, does it make sense for people to get a little bit nervous? Things have been really, really easy so far since the start of the year. Like, think back. It's not so long ago that in December, we were literally talking about recession coming now, stock market crash. So I think a lot of the narratives that you're hearing yesterday was an awful day. You had a big up open and then a, and a sell up to the close. All of a sudden, everyone's like, uh oh, that's it. That's the we do this all the time. It's very important not to look at one day's action and say that that's indicative of what's about to happen for the next 30 days. 60. It just does not work. So here's what I would focus on. The home builders are stalling. Fine. Look at the incredible run they've had. Transports are holding up very well uh, while that's happening. Energy stocks are being smashed. They also had a really nice run. Um, and then you look at, like, technology companies. Um, they're being separated by who had good earnings and who had bad earnings. That's what the market should look like. Microsoft and Facebook had really good things to say. Stocks are hanging in there. Yeah. Google didn't. It should be sold. But there, and that's you know, okay. There, there have been rich some signs. You know, some of the chip stocks that have had these massive moves uh, have gotten hit. A little bit. Maybe that was, you know, a, a sign that, you know, maybe things were getting a little toppy, a little frothy in some areas of the market. No? Yeah, well, Scott, as you know, we've been overweight U.S. equities since the fall of 16. And we have zero emerging market exposure and very little international developed market exposure. Um, the current environment, we think, is conductive, conducive for uh, rising stock prices. The problem we have now, though, is that all the good news is really in the market. We've got uh, low inflation, low interest rates, a very accommodative Fed. Uh, the global picture is improving, but it's all reflected largely in the market right now. So unless we get multiple expansion and rising earning estimates, the market's probably going to be somewhat neutral going forward because most of the gains for 2019 have already been put in. You want to take issue with that? I know we just met, <clears throat> but I will totally disagree with mm -hmm. you. Uh, <laughs> and the bottom line is, is that this market rally has been driven by multiples only. There has been no earnings growth to speak of. That's it right. started this year with expectations that quarterly earnings are going to be down over 4%. As the earnings have come in, and we're almost three-fourths through this earnings season, it's better than expected. And that's great because it really fuels the sentiment of second-half recovery. So what if this earnings trajectory is really driving the next phase of the price action and the data since December has only gotten better. Yeah. And we haven't talked about all the green shoots and all additional things. But again, stock specific stories.